Hi, this is Kathy Quinn with Floriani. Floriani is a division of R&K Distributing, and I want to welcome you to this week's Project of the Week. Well, I've had some questions on a couple of our tools on the left-hand toolbar, one being the Shape tool versus the Stitch tool. There's two tools there. So we're going to look at this and kind of gets an explanation. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to bring in a design. I'm going to come into the library. I've got January 2010. That looks good. Oh, here, let's pull in the snowman. Now, let me change this back to its original. This is what it looks like on your toolbar. On your toolbar. Now, the difference between these two tools. The tool right here, the shape tool, is about changing outlines, inclination lines, which are angle lines, start and stop. Stitches deals with the individual stitches. So let's come in here and look. Now if I click on anything in here, of course it's going to select the whole item. The reason is it is grouped. It, everything that has been done has been grouped together. Why is it grouped? Well, it's grouped because when you bring it in from the library, it's automatically grouped. Now, if I wanted to work with individual pieces of this, let's say I wanted to, let's look at his, let's look through here. Let's say I want to grab his scarf. Now, you notice all this red is together. That's the band on his hat, here's his scarf, and here's part of the gift. But if I click on the plus and drop that down, I could come in here and by holding my control key, I could go through this and I could probably get hold of the whole scarf. I, well, I, not probably, I can. But of course, it's going to take me a little bit of time here to grab this scarf. So let's say I wanted to change the color. I could get an individual piece. Now notice if I grab this steel stitch, just the one, my shape tool became available. But let's go ahead and grab the run stitch. Oop. Now that I've got both of them selected, you notice my shape tool disappeared because I can only shape one object at a time. Okay, so if I need to change the shape of something such as, let's grab, um, let, oh, let's, un let's go ahead and, well, I'm not going to undo it yet. I don't want to ungroup it yet. Let's go down and let me see if I can find my little bird here. Up, oh, see the birds in there. So I can't just, but I could grab his wing. Let me just grab his wing. So I got his wing here, and with grabbing his wing here, I could come in here, and now I've got my shape tool. So let's click on the shape tool. I'm going to get my magnifying glass, and I'm going to zoom in. So even though this is grouped, because I grabbed a selection within the sequence view, and it's only one, it's, it's just one shape, I can come in here and play with it. Now what you're seeing here is you're seeing these yellow lines are your inclination or angle lines. That's the angle the stitches are going to follow. You've got a green that was where this is going to start stitching, and it's going to stitch all the way, and it's going to stop stitching at the red. Now, if I wanted to change the shape a little bit of this wing and tail, then what I would want to do is use the outline control points. But usually, sometimes when they're created in a satin stitch environment, they're underneath your angle line points. So whenever I want to just change the shape, I do real easy. I put my cursor on the edge, I right mouse click, and I go edit just the outlines. Now notice everything else disappeared and all I'm left with now is the outlines. And I might say, you know, I want this to be just a little bit fatter bird. I want him to have a little bit fatter wing, a little bit bigger. And I could change kind of, and maybe I want his tail a little sharper. It just, you know, plan here. Now, the minute I hit enter, which is going to affect my changes, you'll see these stitches will fill in and everything, all my other points will come back, my inclination, my start, and my stop. So now that I've hit enter, you notice his wing got fatter, my tail got a little bit sharper, and all my lines came back. Now, if I wanted to change the angle of the stitches, 
the minute I hit enter, you notice I change that angle. Sometimes you'll have something you're doing and all that's wrong is the angle of the stitches looks weird. How much easier to select that object, come in here and move a, a simple angle. Sometimes fixing a design is as simple as a little bit of an angle change. So that is selecting it in my sequence view and I'm working just with this object so I can change it. But if I tried to click on this with the whole design, I'm going to come in here. If I tried to just select the wing, it's going to select, well if I can even get on a piece, it's going to select the entire design because it is grouped. But it's really nice that our software will allow you to go ahead and edit, even with it grouped, if you know which object you want to edit, which makes it really easy and fun to work with. Now I'm back with this satin path. Now we looked at dealing with the shape. Let's look at what is the stitches. Now when I come in here, I've clicked on stitches. Now it's talking about individual stitches. So let's say I don't like this one. I'm going to select it by left mouse clicking on it and I'm going to delete it. That easy. Let's say I want to get rid of a section of stitches and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's fit to screen. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to touch, um, go ahead and select my design and I'm going to ungroup it. Now, let's say I want to get rid of this bird. Now, I could go through and I could start selecting all the pieces of it and delete it. Or I can come to my stitch. Now, you saw how I could get one stitch. I could come to my stitch tool and I could select the lasso portion and I could lasso this bird. Right now, all those stitches are selected. So now I'm going to delete. I hit the delete on my keyboard. Now you'll notice, and that was more than one color, more than one shape, so it was easier. I got a little remnant here left, if you notice. Now I'm going to pretend I've just got one or two stitches so we can look at stitch edit. Now I can click on that and delete, delete. I'm just hitting delete on the keyboard. So now let's delete his feet here. Those are his little legs. And delete. How much easier was that to do than going and picking out all the pieces to delete on this snowman? Maybe I just wanted to get rid of his bird. So you're going to find that Stitch Edit has a great place when you're trying to get rid of a group of stitches in an area that encompasses more shapes, uh, more than one part of the sequence, different colors, different stitch types. You can just get every stitch that's within that lasso. And remember, that lasso is not this lasso. This lasso is under the Stitch Tool. The Stitch Tool has a lasso. This is an object lasso. So let me just show you the difference on that real quick. Let's say I want to lasso this feather. Now you notice it grabbed the shape. It didn't grab his hat, his band or anything. I lassoed around that feather and it only picked up an object where I lassoed. Whereas if I came to my little stitch tool and got its lasso and I lassoed around this, it's going to grab every single stitch, regardless of stitch type, regardless of color. It sees nothing. It just sees a group of stitches and would allow me to delete those stitches. So this is a really, really handy thing to understand for editing. What if you need to get rid of something? You know, you want to take out a chunk because maybe I wanted to add a watermelon on his head. I just could take out a chunk and fit that in. Or I've got like one or two stitches that are errant that I don't like or aren't there or I might want to add in a stitch or do something. That's the way you deal with it. Now notice I'm going to click on this one stitch just just like I did. I left mouse clicked on this stitch. You can always tell where the stitch is because notice I'll go down here where it's easier to see. I'm going to left mouse click. See how I grabbed that stitch? Now I can right mouse click and say 
I need to insert a stitch after that one. I want to add a couple of stitches or I need a stitch before. Have you ever cleared out a place, taken something out and you've got a little gap between two or three stitches? Well, you could grab that stitch and say, I need to insert a stitch before or a stitch after or I need to insert a stop. You can come in here right where this stitch is and do those exact things. So if I wanted to insert a stitch before this, I would click and then there and now where do I want to put that stitch? I'm going to put it right there and I'm going to put it right there and I'm going to put a stitch right there. Then I'm going to right mouse click and it makes them real. So you want to go ahead and play with these two tools. Get the, get the understanding of the difference between selecting an object and being able to work with it within itself. Okay, when I say an object, it didn't do good that I selected all of that part of the snowman because it's made up of several different sequences. But if I want to deal with one or two, if I want to change the shape of this, I have to select just the single sequence to work with it. Now I can change the shape or I can come in and play with stitches. I want you to play with both of these. Take a design, chew it up, play with it. Learn how easy it really is to kind of edit things that you want to. You don't necessarily have to do stuff from scratch. What if I just wanted to get this broom out of here? I could work with just getting the broom out because I might want the broom to use it for a witch in a Halloween one or I might need his carrot nose for something else. Now there's lots of ways to play with edit but right now these two are confusing to some people. I had some questions on them so I wanted to bring those up specifically and this is what it looks like if you haven't selected lasso. This is shape this is Stitch. So play with these two tools. Get a design up and have a good time. I hope you learned something this week. I hope you enjoy that and I hope you find lots of good uses for those two amazing tools. Have a great week. See you next week. Bye-bye.